Janina Pensky. My name is Janina Pensky. I've already been introduced, and now I'm going to uh, present the policy for the validation of abuse contact that was recently implemented. There it is. For those, for those of you who don't know it, this abuse contact validation policy was uh, approved uh, by LACNIC community in May this year. What does this mean? That when in the WHO is, you're looking for information, uh, for instance, as we see here, we see we have information associated there, and they're, they're all, you always have abuse contacts. And in relation with that, we have information, including the name, uh, the email address, among other things. So what does this policy do? It requires the abuse context of all the blogs, uh, I, IP address, and, and, and to validate and uh, monitor and to have their uh, mailboxes uh, um, surveyed. So if a contact is validated, it ensures knowing the procedure of uh, LACNIC's policies, and it means that uh, the validation uh, of the email was done through LACNIC. With regard to implementation, in order to implement this, this was launched in July 2020. And in a way, it was implemented in May 2021. What does this consist of? First of all, we start with a campaign of communication on the importance of maintaining the contacts updated. This was uh, reported. And then what was done was they sent a direct mail, that is a mail to all the contacts in the system for them to validate their email, to validate their account like that. Then we sent a scaled email, that is from an organization that has a, an abuse contact that has not been validated yet. They you send a mail to all the, all the contacts of that organization. An organization, for those of you who don't know, it has different contacts. One is the abuse contact that I explained, but then you also have the technical contact that may manage the blogs, and then the uh, contact for a membership uh, or for invoices. So the idea was to send an email uh, to all the contacts in that organization, letting them know that their abuse contact must validate their account. So what we did afterwards was uh, to conduct cycles service. We sent this direct mail to the contact that has not validated the account and the scaled uh, um, uh, email to the rest. This is what we are currently doing. These mails are being sent. I imagine that many of you may have read them and many of you may have validated your account. Others may have not. For those of you who didn't, who, who haven't done it, well, in November, there will, we will start with the restrictions in Medecnic to call your attention uh, so that you may validate your account. What is important is that although we restrict some functionalities in Medecnic, the important things, including precisely if you wanted to change the contact, that will be feasible. We also uh, uh, see the contract uh, and uh, the payment, uh, the invoices, all that uh, is enabled. But really, this is to call your attention to the validation. And then we are going to start with a number of uh, phone calls to warn you again of this uh, situation. And finally, if the person persist without validation, then we would uh, trigger the revoking process. We defined this process as friendly as possible. The idea is not to recover resources under no circumstances, but to help uh, for, uh, to enforce the policy so that the organizations may validate their abuse contact. 
some of the results so far that we have seen since the implementation are the following. Here we can see the performance of validation, the behavior of validation. We started in May. We had 3,210 abuse contacts that were not validated because this is when we started. And we see the behavior. These would be the abuse, non-validated abuse contacts. And we see each step would be the emails that were sent every 15 days, one direct email, one scaled. And we see clearly the performance of the validated contacts with these steps that we note every time we sent an email. We saw that this was effective. Now, this step has been decreased over time. These are less and less effective over time, the emails that we send. And recently, we sent an email that is in red here trying to call the attention. We wrote directly to those organizations that still have non-validated abuse contacts. And here, once again, we see a steeper step. So this call, this May email was effective. We have 81% of validated contacts at the level of organizations. Uh, well, as I was saying, each organization has an abuse contact. But it might happen that an abuse contact or a contact is an abuse contact of two different organizations. So what we see here is the behavior of the validation of the abuse contact, but at organization level. So it's very similar. But the number is smaller because an abuse contact can belong to two different organizations. Let us now have a look at the resources that have non-validated abuse contact. We see that an organization might have more than one different resource. In general terms, it occurs that it might have IPv4, IPv6, and ASN. So for the amount of resources that an abuse contact that is not validated, 80% corresponds to ASNs, 67% is IPv6, and 68% corresponds to IPv4. Now, at the level of IPs, we were saying that there are a number of organizations that have not validated the abuse contact. The idea is to see how many IPs these organizations have, these organizations that have not validated their abuse contact. So far, we have about 11 million IPv4 addresses that have an, the abuse contact that has not been validated. Those, this might seem a big number. The good news is that from 185 million IP addresses, Assigned by LACNIC, 94% practically of all those IP addresses have been validated. So the remaining 6% is what is yet to be validated. From that 6%, 5.7% is concentrated in only 25 organizations. So from the 11 million IPv4 addresses that the that don't have that have validated their abuse contact, 10 million are concentrated in 25 organizations, and the remaining would be the 363 remaining organizations. So the good news is, although these are a large number of IP addresses, this is in the hands of 25 organizations only. Regarding policy implementation, this is done both at LACNIC level and also at the level of the other NIRs. This is the information provided by the BR registry. Here we see the performance. They show the validated abuse contact. The number has increased, and at present, they have almost 77 organizations with validated contacts. In IAR, Mexico, they have also reached 69% of organizations that have validated their contacts. 
So although there is work to be done, we see that more than half have already validated their abuse contact. Now, how to proceed with those organizations that haven't validated their abuse contact? How do you go about this? If you ask, enter Milaknik, you will see this notification in your profile. Here, you see not validated contacts. If you click there, validate account, this will take you directly to your profile, or you can go directly to your profile. So once there, you have two options. One is to send a validation email. You click there. That's the simplest procedure. And then you will see an email with this link. You click on that link, and this will take you to a landing page that shows this that you regularly monitor your mailbox, you answer to abuse, contact, and other things. You click on red and accept conditions. And here you have the notification that your contact has been correctly verified. So that's one of the options. The second option is to click on change the email of your account. It might happen that you don't have access to that email, but you can change the email that is associated to your user. So here you enter the alternate email address. You click on Add, and then you will have the email that you have added. And once again, you follow the same steps. You resend the validation email because, of course, you will have to validate this new account that you have just added. You send the validation email, you receive an email, you click on the link, you go to the landing page, and you click on Accept Conditions. So then you will see here Validated, and you can select Mark as Select as Primary. So the idea is to collaborate in maintaining a legitimate database that can be useful for the community and also to collaborate with compliance uh, with those policies approved by the community. So this would be a summary of the implementation, and I look forward to any questions that you might have. And this is my email if you might have questions later on. Thank you. Thank you, Janina. Alfredo Gerando, do you have any questions in the Q&A for Janina? We have no questions in the Q&A. There is a raised hand. I think Jordi, do you have time? Yes, we do. Jordi, you have one minute. I will be brief. First of all, as an author of the proposal that was so difficult to uh, have approved. Congratulations. And just as a way of anecdote, I think that APNIC, which has also implemented the same proposal, took one year to reach 80 percent. So in five months to reach 80 percent is a wonderful record. We thought it would take longer. And the question, in fact, is I watched a video I think I sent an email, or maybe at the end I didn't, asking about this. It might have seemed as if you had to register to another email to validate the abuse contact. And this is not in line with your presentation, but the video basically states that to validate your abuse contact, you have to send an email to this or the other address. I don't know what you saw, Jordi. I'm going to send this to you because I really didn't understand that. That's strange because that video, we have been asked about that, about that. In general, it was very clear. But anyway, send this to me because, well, I will do so because I really didn't understand it. Thank you.